Hello guys! Welcome to my vlog. Today, we'll be focusing on the state of water resources in the Philippines. As we all know, water is the most important substance here on Earth, wherein all plants and animals need water in order for them to survive. Without water, life on Earth would be impossible. So in this vlog, I will be focusing on three aspects. Number one, water resources. Number two, water usage. And number three, water management. So let's begin! Apart from drinking, people have many other uses of water, such as for manufacturing, agriculture, and domestic use. That's the reason why the United Nations considered water as the core for sustainable development and it is critical for socio-economic development, food and energy production, healthy ecosystem, and for human survival. So access to water is one of our basic human rights, leaving no one behind. But before we can access the water supply, we must first answer the question, where and how do we access water supply here in the Philippines? So let's focus now to the first one, the water resources. Number one, water resources. Our country, the Philippines, have abundant water resources and we are endowed with many lakes and river basins. Aside from that, we have an extensive groundwater system. So we can say that our country is blessed with natural resources. But as our country is approaching modernization, there are several parts of our country who clamors for potable drinking water, especially to the people of Masbate, wherein they need to dig deep to the ground, and to the people of Stangkai Tawi-Tawi, wherein they need to wait for rain to drop in order for them to have a potable drinking water. These problems are featured in a GMA documentary eyewitness entitled Sa Bawat Patak ng Ulan by Rafi Tima, at ang paraisong uhaw by Cara David. Number two, water usage. The potential supply from surface water comes from draining river and stream of identified basins wherein 74% of the surface water are tapped for agricultural use, while the ground supply constitute around 20 cubic kilometers per year or about 14% of the water resources potential and readily used domestically and also for agriculture, power generation uses, and also for industrial purposes. The extraction of groundwater is stopped using private wells which are extensively used in rural areas for domestic purposes. The local water utilities administration has water work wells drilled for domestic and commercial purposes, while some companies and even the National Irrigation Administration have deep wells drilled for industrial and agricultural purposes. With the exponential increase of our population, the water demand in the Philippines also increases. According to JICA or Japan International Cooperation Agency, the water demand in the Philippines is expected to increase up to 86 cubic kilometers in 2025. Thus, the overextraction of groundwater could lead to detrimental effects into our groundwater reserve water. In the documentary aired by the British Broadcasting Center in 2019, entitled Jakarta is Sinking Equator from the Air, the Indonesian government are now relocating their capital city into other places in Indonesia because Jakarta is literally sinking into the Java Sea due to the rising sea levels and excessive groundwater pumping, making Jakarta's land sink at a rate of 6.7 inches per year. In Manila, Philippines, the groundwater was already at a critical level and this is due to the extraction causing subsidence or gradual caving of the land area citing a 2004 study commissioned by the National Water Resources Bureau. Currently, we have existing laws published in the Official Gazette of the Philippines known as the Water Code of the Philippines. The Water Code of the Philippines was established with the basic principles and framework relating to the conservation, control, and appropriation of our water resources. 
In the Water Code of the Philippines, it is stipulated that over-extraction of groundwater is illegal. That's the reason why in a published news article by GMA News dated last June 20, 2018, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, specifically the National Water Resources Board, slapped a soft drink manufacturer named Pepsi Cola Product Philippines of a fine of around 11.58 million pesos for operating six deep wells in Muntinlupa, Muntinlupa City without the appropriate permit. The DNR seals the illegal deep wells to lessen the depletion of groundwater resources. With this action, this could give a chilling effect to other companies who are into illegal activities in abusing our water resources. Agriculture is one of the uh, prime movers of our country's economy. With this, agriculture also has the highest water user, approximately around three-fourths of the share of the total water supply in our country. Some of the irrigation water that are used in agriculture comes from the diversion of rivers, pumping of groundwater, and also from the reservoir. Number three, water management. In the Philippines, our water management is considerably unique only in the Philippines, wherein there are many government institutions are connected to the water management sector, like the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. We have also the uh, Department of Agriculture, the National Power Corporation, the Philippine National Oil Corporation, the Department of Energy, the National Water Resources Board, we have also the Department of Health, Department of Public Works and Highways. We have the National Economic Development Authority. We also have the National Commission of Indigenous People. We also have the Joint Executive and Legislative Water Crisis Commission. We have the Local Government Unit under the Department of Interior and Local Government. And we also have the Local Water Utilities Administration. And in Metro Manila, we have Mainilad, Manila Water, and MWSS. So, as you can see, it's very, very unique. As we face a looming problem of severe water crisis by the year 2040, based on the 2015 World Resources Institute study, our lawmakers realized the importance of establishing a national framework for water resources management and creating a new Department of Water Resources and Services or DWSS through a House Bill number 4944. If this bill is passed into law, the Department of Water Resources and Services or DWSS will primarily be responsible for the comprehensive and integration planning, policy formulation, and management of the country's water resources. I think this is an important bill and I hope this will be passed into law to prepare us for the looming crisis in water shortage in the future. Abundance of water resources, both surface and groundwater, I am hoping that the water situation and also the condition of our water resources be addressed by our government for the Philippines to have access with these resources. Furthermore, we must give our counterpart by being a responsible user and conserve our water resources because you never know the value of the water till the well is dry. So every drop counts. So this is Paul John A. Plessis. The state of water resources in the Philippines. Be safe. See ya.